Hi, this is uh, Visual C++ ordering system I developed earlier. So let me show you guys how this works. As you can see, the, from the combo box, we select the product reference number and the description of each product are entered in the description area. Here, I'm going to enter the quantity of uh, food I intend to order. On there, as you can see, the VAT is there and right there and get the total in there and um, underneath here you can always click on total and you get the net total or gross total carriage okay that's for delivery and right here have the date or the reference number the time and reference here I also have currency converter I can convert it into whatever currency uh, I'll be using and that is it so what I'll do next is take you guys straight into Visual C++ and show you how to put this together alright we're gonna start a new project and let's just give it a name we call it ordering system we'll just call it VCPP order systems save that set the form size to 1366 by 700 and back color change back color let's make that black there and the next thing I intend to do is add let's add it to tab control tab control yep there we go tab control right there and change the size of this tab control to 1259 by 600 make that 600 right there maybe move the tab control a little bit up okay let's see maybe this way take it up a little bit more that's fine and uh, let's just change the back color let's let it look a little bit dark um, let's go for dark gray yeah that's fine All right I will now add a label add one label there right there and I think I should revise revise the color for this tab let's change that color to let's change it back to dark a little bit lighter gray yeah come in here make that light gray yeah and get rid of these first and just change the content in there to to customer customer details right there okay that's what I want and this label I'm gonna change that to dark gray make that dark gray and the fonts change the fonts to 16 yeah make that bold 16 auto size force back color or border style make that fixed single All right and I'm just gonna copy this because I will need one more of those here somewhere and in the case of this I want this to be let's make that 226 that's very close 34 by 2 226 all right that's fine and the font size of the second one change that to 12 Okay, now I need a text box or a text box here and change the property to 225 or 220 yeah 225 225 by 34 okay just convert that to multiple line and just put it right beside that change this label change the text content of the label to order 
update and the color for color change that to to white right there and this change the name of this to txt txt date good okay let's come back to the other label right here with the other label let's change the color to white right there and the size of that will be 262 262 by 164 okay that's fine so all I then need to do is copy this I'm going to need three more of these one two and three there so let's just speed that up okay this is how the first part of the design is looking but right now they do not and if I debug you guys will see that okay as you can see there's nothing no problem so if I run the program there's nothing happening right now so let's continue okay the next thing is to take part and take care of the second part of this interface right here so let's speed that up there we go guys we now have labels in place combo box and we have text boxes in place as well so the the final part let's take care of that okay and that's where we will take care of all the totals and so on and here we just need the following there okay and let's just run it so that you guys see the interface the way it looks like okay, run the program and right there that's how the interface is looking right now maybe a little bit of amendment here to align it so let's take care of that select all of these and just tab it Okay, let's see where yeah, that looks a little bit alright okay then the next thing I will do now is double click on on the form so right here where it say it says pragma and region I will enter the following variables those are the variables that I intend to use okay then why on the form load we shall enter the following lines of codes okay these lines of code we generate as follows once the form load all of these numbers will be visible on the combo box right here you see those numbers in there and up here this we generate in random numbers for the other system other number and the account reference number will be generated using this random function that you see up here okay so if I come in here just build it all right that's fine so let's see if this works for the combo boxes let's run it and see if i drop this down you see all of the combo box and up here i have the random randomly generated account reference and other number uh what is remaining for me to do now is take care of the date and time let's add timer double click on timer let me show you the timer should be there somewhere there we go that's the timer and so with the timer double click on the timer right there and enter the following lines of code for the timer okay that's for the timer it's the same lines of code that will be used for the dates really but before then let's go to where it says form initialize let's initialize as follows right here underneath here you can see initialize component right there 
I will just enter timer one dot start. Okay, and my VAT right there. I might as well just take care of that as well. VAT in this case, let's make that maybe 4.5. 0.45 or maybe 35 that's fine so the VAT is take, taking care of the timer is taking care of as well let's debug and run it okay we do have an error somewhere right here okay that's taking care of run it and see again so there's an error it says timer 1 that must be a class or oh, sorry that should be an arrow there okay that's taken care of let's debug it again all right that's fine so if i run the system now we we'll get my timer in place that's working so you now i need to take care of the dates okay with the date now let's double click on the form itself again and let's just i'm going to copy this the timer copy that and come right up here or anywhere paste that in there that'll be for the date we get rid of this and just change this let's change it to maybe i date i date right here so get rid of that as a variable that's why I'm changing that and this one the name of the text box is txt date okay so we can just enter dates right here so that's how you write your write out your own date why underneath here that's how you get the real time but um, using it in conjunction with the timer so that's the timer right there if I run or compile first let's compile and run the program that's fine okay run it there now we have the date in place or the number or the time account reference number so we have the combo box as well working so what we need is to enter some codes for the description to work as well so let's go back into the program the exit is not working so let's take care of that first let's go right down double click on the exit and just enter application oh sorry about that exit okay the exit is taken care of so the next thing now is double click on the combo box itself and just enter as follows if combo box combo box one arrow text equals zero one two and three use that and enter a speech mark in there and txt description description one text equals that'll be let's go for apple there and that's it and then close that so that is the very first one so the rest i'll just copy and speed that up let's copy that so the first combo box is taken care of, that's it, those are the lines of code, so if I run it and drop this down, that's what you guys say, if I any, any of the product reference number clicked on, you see the description right there, but in the case of the other combo box, nothing is happening yet, so let's go back and take care of those, okay, all of the combo box are are taken care of that's combo box five those are the lines of codes and combo box four combo box three combo box two and the first one combo box one they are all taken care of now the next thing for us to do is to take care of the calculations so I will now double click on this 
double click on is very quantity so with quantity one I would enter the following declare the following variable okay let's make that and follow by another string variable that will be for my tabs really yeah then uh, declare double variable and that's okay as for the net another variable in there and just make that quantity okay now let's come down here one more that's for VAT right so all of those variables are in place so for the very first one that will be equals to 3.5 that is the amount and net equals convert let's convert that using this method int 32 and text box 1 quantity 1 there close that and net in this case net equals net multiply that by quantity right there's an error there move that take it up okay now the net is in place now let's assign convert it to string format format it into pound sterling and as zero c2 that is the the method to format into pounds close that and what we're formatting is the net itself okay let's take this off that's not required yeah that's fine now close that then follow by where to store it net close text and what we're storing in there will be let's say system system convert Convert a string and what we convert into string is this value right here there okay that's taken care of so now let's check out the VAT itself so that one equals and that's net multiply that by the VAT which is a global variable and divide that by 100 now we need to store this somewhere let's store that in let's store it here let's go for the variable ST tax equals string format first of all we need to convert it to pounds so that's a zero there c2 the c2 that make it a decimal two decimal place actually and that will close that and what are we converting we're converting v tax to pound sign now we now need to assign it somewhere so let's get a comma right there good XCVAT1 an arrow text equals let's just copy all of this instead of typing paste that in there and just change this to string text okay so hopefully that we should do it let me just debug and run let's see what will happen okay we have an error somewhere double click and just find out where the error is and right here that's the error that's supposed to be net one 
okay let's debug again all right that's fine so if i run the program now let's write and select any product in there and enter something here you can see that that's working as expected with the other ones nothing will happen okay nothing is happening there all right so let's exit now copy this and paste it in the rest and I'll speed that up double click and double click on the second quantity box here this one double click on it and space in there so that's fine that's for the second one and repeats exactly the same thing I've changed this already so come to number three that's number three and change the value of number three to 2.7 change these to 3 and this is 3 as well this is 3 so I believe I've taken care of them all yeah so just let me just speed that up and I'll get back to you guys okay I've debugged it it's working fine so if you want let me just show you guys the codes for all that is for my quantity 5 quantity 4 right there quantity 3 quantity 2 and quantity 1 they are all taken care of so let's run the program so if I enter select any of these and just enter some amounts in there as you can see it's adding up it's just giving you subtotal right of each product but the total itself is not working out and now let's just take care of the total and close that and go to the form double click on the total and declare some some variables there I'm going to declare the following local variables for this total. So let's start by declaring double. Uh, let's say add up. Okay. Now another double. Just copy that. Declare another double. So I'm going to call that QT. QTY1. QTY2. Qty3, Qty4, Qty5. Alright, so one more double variable. Let's go for V tax. Alright, so we need some string variables right there. string tax yeah so those are the variables in place now all of these QTs that's where I'll be storing my values might as well just give them all the value come right now close this it's on the way and this will be three points This one is this is equals 4.5 and this is equals maybe 2.7 the next one here that's equals uh, let's say 6.5 then finally that's equals 2.5 so number 5 is 2.5 let's verify yeah that's it is 2.5 6.5 okay that's good all right so the next thing now is the variables up here the global variables here where are they i have them there we go here they are 
So let me just copy those so that I don't forget. Copy them, bring it down, which I'll delete later on. Let's paste that in there. And those are the values that I'll be using. I'll be using all of those values. Okay, so the first value will be N1 equals convert. Let's convert to let's convert to integer 32. Whatever value is inside text box quantity one. There. So whatever is inside text box quantity one is stored into n1 as an integer. Now, we then say n1 equals qt1 multiplied by n1 itself. So whatever is in here in the text box is multiplied by this and stored in here. All right, so that's taken care of. So exactly the same thing will be repeated for the rest. So let me just copy and paste. So this is n2. This is three, 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 three. Okay, so let's just do it for four as well and five. Okay, bring that up. Now I have four, four, and four right there. And finally, five. Alright, so and I have all my storage for every single one of them. Okay. So all that is taken care of. Now what is left for me to do is you see this variable right here that is called add up. I will now store every single one of these into add up so paste that in there so all of this will be stored into add up let's cut that off equals so enter the plus sign here plus 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 semicolon okay so i suppose you guys are following the total so that's how that will be taken care of so every single value in here now is stored in add up now the next thing is maybe let's just paste it in a bracket let it look a bit decent the next thing now is to then convert it to pound sign let's say the string that is declared equals string format Format that, and also we have a speech map in there. There should be called a bracket, and that will be in there will be zero column C2. So that represents pound, and that is uh, two decimal places. Okay. So let's close that and end that right there. Uh, sorry, comma. I need a comma there before closing it. Comma. I now need to specify what I am converting. That's what I'm converting. I'm actually converting these to pound sign. All right, that's taken care of. Now scroll down so we have enough room for the other ones. Okay, the next one I need to take care of now is that of total. So, txt total. To the net. Arrow text equals 
system system convert convert to string and what I'm converting to string is the this variable right there this one so that's taken care of now correct that error okay so we need one for the VAT as well VAT equals as a tax VAT so let's just go for add up multiply by VAT divide that by 100 close that now ST tax okay make that string format that let's copy all of this and drop it there now so we then change this let's change this to v v tax and just repeat the same thing for the rest and that is that is for total okay so we've taken care of the total all right so let's debug let's debug it and see the one here all right we have some missing semicolon somewhere okay I think I can spot one there now let's check the other ones it's one here and maybe another one here okay so let's see let's debug it again just to be sure that it's now okay Okay, that's the other error here, so that's it. So let's debug again. Alright, seems the total will be working as we want or as uh, expected. So let's just try it out again. Let's try out the system, enter some value in there. And that's it. Click on total yeah the total is working as expected so the last part of it is just the currency converter I already have a tutorial the currency converter on the system or on uh, YouTube so that shouldn't take so long I can just copy and paste that in there so with the currency converter we need to de declare some variables so let's go to to pragma okay oh. Yeah, that's it. Pragman and region right there. We need to declare some variables. Okay, it's right there. Sorry about that. The variables are there. So, okay, now let me copy this because I'm gonna need that for my for my date as my data. So we just copy. Let's copy that. And we need that right in here. Let's go to the form right here double click on that double click on the convert button and then come right here paste that in there so the exchange rate for each country let's say Nigeria is uh, 2.0 360 uh, 302.96 and US dollar let's say 1.0 to five two can shillings that'll be about one five six point two one I might not be hundred percent accurate let's go for Brazil Brazilian money now Canadian that's a three points and uh, Indian rupee Indian maybe that might be hundred might not be right but you guys can get that sorted yourself get rid of that okay we need Philippines 71 point something now here we need Indonesia 
and let's uh, sign there all right so that is supposed to be my exchange rate I don't know if they're right or wrong but you can always check it out if you want to get it 100% right okay so I have those in place so the next thing is uh, let's declare a variable there so I'm gonna say double double British pounds underscore pounds equals convert convert to int 32 whatever is entered inside txt converter okay so close that now let's say if cmd currency equals Nigerian then this is the sign we just need the Nigerian money right here multiplied by that of the British one so if I copy that let's copy and just paste it for the rest the next one is US so that will be dollar sign and that will be US repeat the same thing for the rest so let me just speed that up and that is how it's looking right now as it taking care of I have the Nigerian one US Kenyan Canada Brazil India Philippines and Indonesia and right up here we also need to initialize as follows okay so this when you run the program this will be added onto the combo box so you can always select make selection so let's run it let's debug first debug we have an error somewhere so let's see where might that be now right here this is the error you see the R which is wrong Okay, let's debug it again. Okay, we also have another error somewhere. Undeclared. The spelling of dollar. Okay, let's just try it a bit out again. Um, okay, right here. There's an E somewhere. Okay, double click on that. Alright, there we go. Get rid of that and let's debug it again one more time debug yeah I think that's fine yeah that's fine okay so that's working as we want I now need to take care of this double click on that so for the close that's how I want the close to be to open up the button and set the default of the combo box to to this and just clear the following text. Let's copy this. I'm gonna need this again. Copy now come in here right there. So let's cover this back. Double click on that very button. Press enter and change that to force so visible equals force right there. Okay, so I believe I think I have finished. So let's see. Yep, it's successful. Let's run the program right now. If I click on that, select whatever currency, enter that, check that out. That's fine. And enter my data in there. Okay, enter some numbers here. All 
and click on total bang so and that's it guys that's how you develop your own ordering system in visual c plus plus click on close and that's fine so with that i'll just call it the end of this program i suppose you all enjoy it so you have a nice day now bye for now